All right, let's dive into something that at first sounds completely backward, but it might just change how we think about AI and data. We're talking about DeepSeek OCR, a project that asks a pretty wild question. Can you take a thousand words of text, turn them into a picture, and somehow make the data smaller? And hey, it's not just us asking. When this paper dropped, the internet basically lit up with this exact question. This comment from a user named Crackers on Hacker News just nails it. It's the central mystery we're going to unpack today. How on earth is this possible? What's the trick here? So this whole thing hinges on an idea the paper calls optical compression. And yeah, it's a paradox that completely flips that old saying on its head. We've always been told a picture is worth a thousand words because it's packed with so much information. But what if we could use a picture to compress those thousand words instead? So get this. The claim from the Deep Seek paper is almost unbelievable. They're saying they can get a nearly 10-fold compression ratio with almost no loss of information. Now, this isn't just some small incremental improvement. It's a massive leap that seems to defy logic. To understand how they do it, we first have to understand the problem they were trying to solve. You know, this whole idea didn't just pop up out of nowhere. It was born from a huge and, I mean, huge expensive headache in the AI world, the long context problem. The thing is, large language models are incredible, but they have this one critical weakness when you throw long documents at them. The culprit is this nasty little thing called quadratic scaling, and it is a real pain for developers. It means if you double the length of a document you're feeding an AI, you don't just double the processing cost, you quadruple it. Double it again, and that cost skyrockets 16 times. It is a computational nightmare. And this isn't just a theoretical problem, right? It has huge real-world consequences. Imagine trying to get an AI to summarize an entire novel, or analyze a 100-page financial report, or make sense of a complex legal case. With quadratic scaling, the cost and the time just become astronomical. So researchers are desperately looking for a way to break this bottleneck. OK, so how do you even begin to solve a problem like that? Well, the secret lies in a really fundamental difference between how an AI reads text versus how it sees an image. And it all comes down to something called tokens. Think of it like this. On one hand, you've got text tokens. They're kind of like individual Lego bricks from a set with a limited number of shapes. On the other hand, you have vision tokens, which are way more like custom molded clay. You can shape them in almost infinite ways. Let's break that down a little bit more. So a text token, imagine the word explainer. The AI might break that down into two pieces, explain and er. Each of those pieces gets assigned a number, like 5821 and 43. The AI then looks up those numbers in this giant pre-made dictionary of about 100,000 entries to figure out what they mean. It works, but it's a very rigid, one thing at a time kind of process. Now, vision tokens, they are a whole different ballgame. There is no dictionary. A neural network looks at a patch of an image and generates a complex vector, basically a long list of numbers that describes that little patch in incredible detail. And because this vector is continuous, not just a single ID number, it can pack in way more information. It can capture the meaning of several words, their layout, their font, all in one shot. So if these vision tokens are so information dense, how do you actually create them from a page of text in an efficient way? Well, that is where DeepSeek's secret weapon comes into play, a brand new architecture they built called the Deep Encoder. See, the real magic here isn't just someone saying, hey, let's use vision tokens. Lots of people have thought of that. The breakthrough is designing a system that can look at a super high resolution image of text and intelligently squeeze it down into a very small number of these powerful vision tokens without losing all the meaning. And their process is just brilliant. It's got three steps. First up, they use a model called SAM that's really good at scanning for tiny, fine-grained details, like the exact curve of each letter. Then, a convolutional compressor acts like a funnel, dramatically reducing the number of tokens. And finally, a model called CLIP comes in to understand the big picture, the global context of the whole page. So, what you get at the end of this clever pipeline is an encoder that is just incredibly efficient. It can handle high-res images without needing a ton of memory. And this is the most important part. It spits out a tiny number of these supercharged, information-packed vision tokens. This is the engine that actually makes optical compression possible. OK, so the theory sounds good. The architecture is cool. But we have to ask the big question. Does it actually work? 
Can you really compress text this way and then get it back accurately? Let's look at the results. The answer is a resounding yes. The paper's benchmarks show a nearly 10 times compression ratio is totally achievable. That means a document that would normally need, say, a thousand text tokens can now be represented by just around a hundred vision tokens. That's huge. And what about accuracy? At that 10x compression, what do you lose? Almost nothing. The model was able to decode the original text with about 97% precision. That is practically lossless. You're getting this massive gain in efficiency for a tiny, almost negligible hit to accuracy. I mean, just look at how it stacks up against other models. On a pretty tough benchmark, another model needed over 6,000 vision tokens to process a page. DeepSeek OCR, it got an even better result using fewer than 800. It's not just accurate, it's on a whole other level of efficiency. And what's really cool is this trade-off. You can see here, you can push the compression even further if you want. At 15 times compression, you still get back almost 86% of the information. You can even go to a crazy 20 times compression and still retain nearly 60%. The fact that the quality degrades so gracefully is incredibly promising. So what does this all mean? Why does this matter? Well, this is way bigger than just a better way to do OCR. This clever compression trick could have some really profound implications for the future of AI itself, especially when we talk about memory. Hey, remember that long context problem we talked about? This optical compression could be a way out. Instead of an AI having to hold this massive, expensive text history of a conversation in its active memory, maybe it could start compressing the older parts into these super efficient visual representations. And this, this is where it gets really mind-bending. The authors of the paper themselves draw a direct parallel to how our own brains seem to work. I mean, think about it. Our memories aren't perfect video recordings. They fade, they compress over time. We remember the gist, not every single word. You can actually imagine an AI memory that works like this. Information from just a moment ago, it's crystal clear, high fidelity. But as time passes, the AI could apply more and more compression. The image of that memory would get blurrier and smaller, taking up fewer resources, just like our own memories fade from sharp detail into a general feeling. And that just leaves us with this huge, thought-provoking question. We usually think of computer memory as perfect, absolute, and flawless, but this research points toward a future where AI memory could be much more biological, much more, well, human. So if an AI has to forget the little details to remember the big picture just like we do, what does that really change about its journey to truly learn?